old houses always spark the imagination of its history, its current state, and its possibilities for the future. But as we've seen time after time, malevolent spirits lay dormant beneath the floorboards, just waiting for hapless souls to cross the threshold. Whether it's Amityville Horror, or Poltergeist, or sharing a penthouse with Amber Heard. My dog stepped on a bee. There's something dangerous afoot. With this month's interview, we get to learn about a new story in that same vein. I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and for the June edition of Author Awareness, I'm interviewing Canadian writer Brad Dunn about his book, The Merchant's Mansion. Happy Saturday and welcome to my channel. If you're new, glad to have you, and if you're a returning viewer, glad to have you back. You can become a channel supporter through Patreon and the merch store. Both are linked down in the video description. And I'll talk more about those options towards the end of the video. Of course, the fastest, the easiest, and the freest way to support what we do here, especially in this time of inflation, is by becoming a subscriber. So click the subscribe button and smash that like button. Next week is my second summer lecture at the Hanford Library. This month I'm talking about storytelling then and now. The purpose of this talk is to break down how storytelling has evolved from an oral tradition at the dawn of time to the various media that it now constitutes in modern storytelling. Now if you're a local to the area, please stop on by the library. If you follow me on social media, I will be live streaming directly to Instagram, meaning there will not be any videos on YouTube next week. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. Brad, thank you for joining me. How are you doing today? Good, man. Thanks for having me. So tell me a little bit about your work and what you write. Uh, so I'm an author from Newfoundland, Canada. I write uh, mostly horror. Um, published two novels. A lot of it has to do with local history and kind of uh, integrating that into horror tropes. And uh, I also do some editing and short story and also some nonfiction journalism kind of stuff. What uh, so? What kind of nonfiction do you write? You said journalism, but that that can cover a wide range of different things. Yeah, so I write a lot about uh, Newfoundland culture. Um, I do like book reviews for uh, Literary Review Canada, for example. Mm -hmm. uh, you can also find my stuff in uh, Maisonneuve and The Walrus. Um, Canadian Encyclopedia as well. Uh, a lot of stuff on like arts and culture, Newfoundland, Canadian culture, um, that kind of stuff. Very cool. Very cool. So how did you get into writing? Was this something that you've always wanted to do or is this something that you've developed a passion for m more recently? Uh, on and off my whole life. Um, ever since I was a little kid reading Goosebumps books, I'd write my own stories and then uh, got into university, joined the uh, campus newspaper. Um, when I got out of university, I did an internship at uh, the Walrus Magazine in Toronto, and then uh, published a few uh, short stories and articles and stuff. And then in 2018, I published my first novel, uh, After Dark Papers, with uh, a local Newfoundland publisher called uh, Engine Books. What draws you to uh, to horror, especially? I mean, you mentioned Goosebumps, and that's, I mean, I, I remember reading a couple of those when I was in, in middle school and stuff like that. but. What draws you particularly to horror? Uh, ever since I was a little kid, my mom used to read me Edgar Allan Poe stories mm -hmm. for bedtime. Um, I always loved 
well, my parents were kind of strict, but they let me rent like Hocus Pocus and Jaws and PG, PG-13 horror movies and then graduated to Stephen King and, uh, you know, Silence of the Lambs and, and all that. So it's just always been with me. And, you know, my mom loves gothic fiction and I think she kind of just you know, bequeath that to me. So what are some of your influence? I mean, we, we talked about some of the movies that you've seen and some of the books that you've read. What are any specific influences that you've personally drawn from that, that you can say without a shadow of a doubt that this is the stuff that has influenced you the most? Uh, definitely, like, I would say H.P. Lovecraft. I draw a lot from him. Um, I draw a lot from, uh, oh, what's the name of the writer who did Haunting the Hill House? Drawing a blank now. Was it Henry James? <laughs> no, it's a female writer. Shirley Jackson. Um, Shirley oh. Jackson. Um, Haunting the Hill House, big one. Uh, Stephen King, and then I love, uh, like, Tolkien. I, I love the Red Wall books by Brian Jackson when I was a kid. Uh, also, like Arthur C. Clarke with science fiction and um, Ray Bradbury, Phil K. Dick, uh, yeah. those kind of genre writers. And but also like, I also really like like Hemingway and James Joyce and, and Virginia Woolf when I got to university. What has been the hardest part or the biggest challenge that you've encountered in the creation of your work? Well, like in terms of nitty gritty writing, I would say I struggle a lot with like middle, the middle act. Let's say. Um, beginning and endings, smooth sailing. The problem is sustaining some of that through the middle slog of books and finding a way to flesh out ideas. It's definitely the, the best writers are definitely the ones who have a strong middle game. I would say like Stephen King, he's got a great, I think that's why you know, his books have a slow start and a lot of them, people aren't happy with the endings, but the middles are always really strong. And yeah. I think that's that's a, a mark of like a very advanced writer is someone who can sustain that interest through the middle um, and without letting it sog. Um, so that's, I say, something that I'm consciously been working on the last year or so. Otherwise, I would say a big challenge is like getting yourself out there, just trying to get attention, getting readers, getting people to review your stuff on Amazon. There's a whole... You know, there's a whole second act to writing a book that, you know, you write it and if you've never written a book before, it's you, the impression is like you just write it and then it just goes out to the world. <laughs> it's no. like if you build it, if you build it, they will come. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there's a whole other part of trying to get people to, unless you're, unless you have a big name, like, you know, you got, you got to make your own thunder, really. Uh, what advice would you give to other would-be authors out there? What would you say to them? How would you encourage them? If I were to give myself like uh, advice when I was starting early, it would be to just write more, <laughs> uh, do more, uh, get more stuff done, get more stuff out there. Uh, you you know, I think something that I struggle with, and I know a lot of like a lot of my friends went to school with. They're all like, "Oh, geez, I wish I could publish, and I wish I could write." But blah, blah, blah. the problem, I think, too many people shoot down ideas early in the stage. And they think, oh, this is derivative and this is blah, blah, blah. You have to, or like they think they have to research all this stuff. And I guess what I would say, you can't learn to swim without getting in the pool. You have to write stories. You have to write novels. You have to put it out there for people to rip apart. <laughs> and uh, it's going to be uncomfortable, but like you got to churn through the words so that you can move on to other projects and, and get better. Just it's the only way to do it. Um, you know, you'll probably write a million bad words before you finally write something that you can publish. And oh. there's just no other way through it other than to do it. Uh, so if, if anyone if would be want to be writers or listen to this and they're struggling to get some projects off the ground, all I can say is, is see it through to the end. Uh, you have to you have to finish stuff you start. And then if it sucks, just move on to the next project. Yeah. Don't workshop at death. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Th uh, Brad, I want to thank you for coming on the show. Uh, before I let you go, how can people get a hold of your work? How, how can people connect with you? Uh, well, you can go to my website, braddunn.ca. Uh, you can find me on Instagram, uh, author Brad Dunn, one word. And I'm on, I have an author page on Facebook, um, Brad Dunn slash author. Otherwise, you can find my stuff on Amazon. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you for, your, for being on the show. I really appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for having me. Hey, if you're interested in connecting with Brad through social media and through his website, or if you'd like to pick up copies of his work, 
You can find all of those links located down in the video description. You're really going to enjoy what you find there, especially if you like horror. Hey, thanks for watching. Please make sure to hit like and subscribe. If you'd like to support this channel and what we do here, you can do so on Patreon through one of three affordable support plans. Patrons get access to blooper reels, behind the scenes videos, and so much more. You can also buy sweet merch from my store on Teespring, which you can then turn around and rep on Instagram and Twitter by tagging me at GKJ underscore publishing and using the hashtag Five Kingdoms Merch. Or you can sign up for the free poster giveaway. All links are down in the video description, as I said before, and I will announce a winner when I hit 200 YouTube subscribers. Make sure to tune in for the live stream as I break down storytelling's evolution from its beginning to it, the time all the way through modern era. The vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.